Hey guys, so today I want to share with you my experience on the burn surgery service at Mass General and also at Shriners Burn Hospital. And there's so much I want to share with you. I posted up a video yesterday, but I'm reposting one up today because I am going to share with you a few more pictures and also a little bit about epidermal lys lysis bullosa and also to address some of the comments. So thank you very much to Jesse212-9341, Claudia Strauss, Shad, Motivation, Study Wizard, Dwight Deviant, Jay Sheem, and RC Triple Fresh 5, and other people's comments. So, uh, before I get to that though, in, if you're if you have short attention span uh, with, with regards to YouTube videos, uh, I'm just going to first tell you about Shriners Burn Hospital, and because it is an amazing institution, I really hope you can visit it sometime. Volunteer if you're a college student, high school student, if you're a medical student do a rotation there. Um, it, it has been one of the best experiences of my medical school life. And so there's at UC Davis, Cincinnati, Galveston, and Boston. Those are the four burn hospitals. And the reason why Shriners is so amazing, one of the reasons is because they provide free care for children. Um, their motto is that you can't put a price tag on a child's health. And it is just so admirable what they're doing. The kids come in, horrific burns, horrific tragedies, uh, kids coming in from being incinerated in a tent, so the entire tent caught on fire, they got trapped in the fire, all 90% total body surface area burns, or children with abusive parents or step parents getting dunked in 160 degree water, held down there, and no skin left except for very few areas, uh, maybe on the head and on the scalp. And uh, so the Shriners Burn team, they, they come in, they save the patient's life, and then the plastics team and therapists and and teachers and nutritionists and psychiatrists and social work and everybody is just so compassionate, kind and and also as a medical student you get to do a lot. So I was, um, you get to be helpful. Um, sometimes in in hospitals you don't get to necessarily be really helpful because the the students are sometimes relegated to watching a lot. But in in burns because the some because of the massive area, uh, the burn size, often the surgeon will need the uh, extra hands if possible. So you have the surgeon, the resident, and the med students, the nurses, everybody working on a different part of the body. And so as a medical student, I got to uh, debride, so get rid of the dead tissue, graft, new skin sites, or artificial skin sites, suture. I had got to put on dressing changes, put on inject marcaine anesthesia, different aspects of care that that were for me very memorable, very um, great learning opportunities and also very inspirational because you get to be part of the team that can save a patient's life and help bring that patient back. So the so in terms of the comments, so thank you very much for the comments. There's a little bit of, uh, I think there's a misunderstanding of my last video yesterday. So I'm probably going to seem exuberant and, and excited, and uh, but that in no way diminishes the, the tragedy and the sadness that uh, in the hospital and also in, in every every patient's story and situation. It is There are definitely many moments where I was on break of tears, but at the same time there's a lot of happiness, positive energy from the from the family, from the patients. A lot of the patients are very hopeful, very optimistic, and and it's just, it's, it's um, it's incongruous sometimes for you to feel really sad when the patient's feeling really happy and optimistic about life and going to school, playing soccer and things like that. And then also the the, the doctors and the nurses and as a medical student, um, my job is to learn, but also I feel responsible in, in trying to have to, to, to be positive and to learn how to take care of the patient. And in, in other words, if I was a patient, I wouldn't want my care team to be to be to be crying, I, I would want them to be very professional and competent, and to have um, to to know exactly what to do to help me. So, if I seem excited in this video, it's because I am, but it's because I am about the, the optimism and also for the for the patients. Uh, they're very inspirational, and um, also the the team, the care team is very inspirational. So, wanted to give you a historical story, which is about Clifford Johnson, and so this story. Um, it's going to be about a couple minutes, but I hope you stick with me because it is, I loved it. I love the story about the, the med student and everything. You, you'll see what I mean. So, okay, Clifford Johnson. So in 1942, there's a Coconut Grove fire. It's one of the worst accidents in, in 
the history of America. And 490 people got burned uh, and died, and a few more hundred were casualties. And so there's a guy named Clifford Johnson. He was on his first date, and he. Uh, the, so Coconut Grove is a dance place. It was a disco, and and. Clifford Johnson, he, he got out of the fire, and then he went back in four times to try to save his date. And Clifford, as, by the fourth time, he was, in flame, he was in flames, and he ended up um, sustaining 40% total body surface area burns, deep burns, and then additional 15 to 20% lighter uh, surface area burns. But back then, 40% was considered uh, fatal. It was lethal. Nobody survived. Nowadays, 40% total body surface area burns, you're expected to be up and walking in about six weeks, which is just amazing about modern medicine. So just as an aside, the, um, I know there's a lot of discontent about healthcare, about policy, and about different drugs and pharm uh, pharmaceutical companies. There's a lot of discontent, but if you wanted to see an uh, amazing facet of medicine and Western medicine, you should definitely check out the Read and more read about the, the the way burn surgery has progressed. It is it is remarkable. So, Clifford Johnson, forty percent total body surface area burns. He was expected not to live, and so he was placed in the expectant area. It's called the expectant area because he wasn't expected to live. And he, at the time, only medical students were in the expectant area because the doctors were too busy in in, in the place in treating patients that they thought were going to live. And the um, I, I don't agree with that, but that's just the way it worked. And uh, and f so there's a medical student, Phil Butler, and he was he was taking care of Clifford Johnson's patient, uh, Clifford Johnson, and he was up all night for three days in a row, and he didn't follow he didn't know standard of care. So standard of care was to give five liters of fluid, and he didn't know about that. So he ended up giving. Uh, he, he looked at Clifford Johnson, looked at his vital signs, hemodynamics, urine output. He thought Clifford Johnson looked a little dry, a little dehydrated, and so he just kept kept giving him fluid, and he still kept. And he looked at Clifford, and he gave gave him fluid. Looked at Clifford, gave him fluid, and and felt that Clifford just kept looking really dry and dehydrated, and ended up giving him 12 liters of fluid, which at that time was totally unheard of. As in, if you were attending, you would never give 12 liters. That would be considered crazy. And so, but Clifford survived. And what was amazing was that Clifford, uh, so he got 12 liters in modern day formulas after a lot of science and research. It calc it's around that ballpark. So Philip Butler, ahead of his time, but basically staying with the patient, paying really close attention to patient care and looking at the vitals. And so just the inspiration to me as a medical student, but probably uh, and speaking to some of the residents, very inspirational for them and then a good take home lesson, which is that don't necessarily follow predetermined dogma, but really stick, really pay attention to the patient. And um, so that's Clifford Johnson. Uh, he, he actually was, he, he, it was a very tough, tough story in terms of took a year to recover, very difficult. Uh, he, he had a lot of bacteria, overgrowth and sepsis and got really sick and the nurses came in and out and were exhausted and didn't want to come and some nurses were very good hearted and volunteered and but he ended up making it so I'm just going to show you a couple pictures of this um, but just to, to let you know these pictures are not for shock and awe but it's just to show you um, how amazing it is that that uh, and, and just kind of uh, I think pictures can sometimes do a better job, but if you're affected by graphic pictures, please turn this off. It's not meant to meant to shock or anything like that. So here is um, so here is the picture of Clifford Johnson. So as you can see, huge burns, and then this is his team. This is from Life magazine, and Phil Butler is the guy on the right. He's now he was a doctor, and I guess he's passed away. And then um, and then the happy news is that he he recovered. So this is him recovering, and just really overall inspiring story he ended up marrying one of his nurses and ending up ended up having a life um and so that's the history and in terms of as a medical student um i think i talked a little bit about the or a random story about the or is that the or can get really hot so it's 108 degrees and everybody's sweating so it's the only OR that I've seen where the outside there's a refrigerator and Gatorade and water and so nurses and doctors and attendings everybody is drenched and um, and you have to go in and out and out and some people have trouble uh, having to sit out and and uh, and then come back in and 
but you might ask why exactly do you need why is it so hot because the skin um, if it's burned like don't you want to cool it down and so the thing is you want it to be warm because you don't want the patient to lose heat because the skin has thermal regulatory properties and so it's just very important to, to, to keep them warm and also hypothermia if it's too cold the patient can't coagulate so the patient will keep bleeding and so it's important to get them at that warm temperature and then so finally Shriners I think I talked about Shriners how amazing it was um, but to express my profound appreciation for the families how how strong they are for the patient's strength and 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 integrity it's very sad sometimes um, but at the same time like I said it's very complex because the patients are so strong and and they they come in and four or five years later six seven years later I I was very moved deeply moved by uh, one patient who f flew in from Russia and just so thankful, so grateful for some of the procedures, operations that she got for reconstruction to her face because it was severely burned and um, and you know her she was hugging the plastic surgeon Dr. Donnellan and who was a great guy. I, I, I love Dr. Donnellan and uh, and then some of the uh, amazing operations they do, a profound appreciation for teachers and schools and, and support because so these kids, um, they do much better if you can get them back into school and in a supportive environment. So a lot of uh, parents don't necessarily feel comfortable with that because they're afraid that people can uh, get made fun of and actually children can be quite mean. So um, in speaking with psychiatrists, they can call the children with burns, they, you know, french fry or toast or Freddy Cougar or things like that. and and it's unfortunate that in the mainstream media, uh, in movies, you know, oftentimes people with burns, uh, they're portrayed in a very, like, unfriendly light. And, uh, and I mean, all of that, I hope, in sharing this with you, and I, I hope this will change better uh, and progress in a much more positive direction. But uh, f for me, right now, I feel profound appreciation for schools and teachers and, and support networks, psychiatrists, therapists. Occupational therapy is amazing. That uh, So there's a kid with uh, extensive scars to the neck and just like contracted like this. And then the physical therapist every day just very patiently stretching the, the neck and it's incredible. So the um, last thing I want to talk about a little bit about, about epidermal lysis below. So I don't know if I have a ton of time left, but... Uh, the, this is a disease where the skin is, uh, the first layer of the skin, epidermis, and the second layer of dermis, it, they can't stick together. And so I saw some patients uh, with this disease. What happens is that you, you, end up, um, you end up peeling off, sloughing off your skin. And if you put too much pressure, uh, you can see thumbprints, uh, bloody thumbprints and stuff like that. So very dramatic and, um, and going in the OR and, and just hoping, uh, helping with the dressing changes, you just have to feel really very careful and um, be very careful. And anyways, there's uh, oftentimes these kids they have the their hands are like this because everything is stuck together. And then so you have to. Um, there's a Dr. Joe Upton who's very famous, uh, probably one of the world's few surgeons who can do surgeries and just and um, and operate so that their hands they get they regain their hands. But it's a very uh, bloody operation. So um, I, from my experience there, I was holding the hand and changing the dressings and it's just this hand of uh, without the skin so it's very bloody and, and very intense and the, the surgeon is just very gently and patiently scraping away and um, and cleaning it and it, it's, it's for, for me that was the most powerful um, moment I think I was almost on the brink of tears when when we talked about some of the prognosis for these kids they were um, Prognosis is not good. They often die from malnutrition because of the esophagus being scarred down because the esophagus, the skin also sloughs off as so they can't eat. And um, and so the, these children, these two children that I saw, they were very lucky to have wonderful uh, parents that could take care of them. And so they were still alive. And so I hope the best for them. But I'm just so, uh, I'm so inspired by their their attitude. Um, I mean, he, this one kid, he, he, he wants to do space exploration and you know, he read Moby Dick before he came in, and just the brightest guy, the best attitude, and he goes through so much suffering, like, he has to um, go through a three-hour bath, and the bath is a bleach um, to clean off his skin, and he's always in pain during that time, but but uh, during the school, he's all he's all about the, you know, you know Roman debates, and, uh, and, and reading Stephen Hawking, just incredibly uh, inspiring. So, anyways, epidermal lysis below, so it's not a well-publicized disease, so Please learn about it and support it.
if you can in terms of research funding and stuff like that. And um, so I think, I'm not quite sure how much time I have. Um, oh.